let me introduce you to the most advanced CNC machine I have ever used, the Nestworks C500. This has so many inbuilt features, I don't even know where to start in regards to telling you for this video. Now I have literally only had this in the workshop a couple of days, but as this machine is about to go live, I thought I would give you an overview of its capabilities, what it can do, some of its amazing features, and ultimately some of my first impressions from just starting to use it. So let's dive in and talk more about the Nestworks C500. Now my first impressions is this is not a lightweight machine and that is a literal observation. This weighs around 90 kilograms or around 200 pounds. The entire package that I received was closer to 150 kilograms. So the first thing I will stress is that you will need somebody else to give you a hand lifting and getting this into place because of its weight. Now ultimately, the reason it is so heavy is because of the way it's been built, all the features that have been put within it, and ultimately the solid rigid frame that everything is structured around. So let's work from the outside inwards. The overall dimensions of the machine are around 520 by 520 by 670 on the height. Now you will obviously need more space than that to open the enclosure itself. I can't actually measure the full height with the door open because well, it's hitting my ceiling, but ultimately you do need to allow extra opening space for the enclosure cover. The working area actually has two different dimensions. Now the reason for this is because of the inbuilt ATC or automatic tool changer. I will talk about that more in a couple of minutes, but let's go back to the work area. Now with the ATC, the work area is 230 by 213 by 128 on the Z axis travel. Now they do state that you can do this with manual tool changing and you get a bigger work area which is 280 wide, 235 deep, and 150 on the Z travel. Now I am working on the basis that that is by removing the ATC carriage off the bed and ultimately giving you a bigger work area on that, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll try and confirm that on the next video. And the bed itself is made from 20 millimeter thick steel. So for a desktop CNC machine, it really doesn't get much stronger than that. Now moving on from the work area, let's talk about all three axes. These are running on linear rails, ball screw drive system with closed loop NEMA 23 stepper motors. That is pretty impressive. And if you're not familiar with the term closed loop, it is critical because what it actually means is that it is feeding back to the machine as it is running. So it can monitor it much more accurately in terms of its position, what is going on and any pressures that may be being put on the stepper motors themselves. But beyond that, as you can see, everything is fully enclosed. So this ultimately means that none of the debris that you are machining is going to get close to those components. And that is very important for something I'm about to move on to in a couple of minutes. And at the heart of this machine is an 800 watt brushless spindle with a range of up to 18,000 RPM. I'm also pretty sure this is a closed loop spindle, but not 100% sure. So again, I will try and confirm that in the next video about it. So let's move on to the fancy stuff. Well, the first thing I mentioned earlier on is the ATC. This has an inbuilt automatic tool changer. Now again, if you're not familiar with that terminology, it literally means that you can program your job to use different CNC bits and it will just change them automatically as it goes along. No more of getting the wrenches out to try and change the bits over. It just drops one off, picks the next one up and carries on machining. Now the ATC within this can take five different tools. So ultimately should be enough for pretty much any job that you want to do. It also has an inbuilt tool setter at the back of it. Now what a tool setter does is once the spindle has picked the bit up, it allows to come down, touch off the top of it, and then the machine knows how much bit length is sticking out of that. And it can ultimately do all the calculations it needs to know where to machine and obviously the depth that it is machining on. So what that actually means in reality is that you can have a job that will take multiple CNC bits and you basically just have to press go and let the machine do its thing. It will swap the bits out for you. It will reset the height of them for you and go from the start of the job to the end of the job without you needing to do anything else whatsoever. 
the ITC mechanism itself is thread driven. So basically it's like using a normal spindle. It will spin itself down into the nut in order to lock it in position. And when you're ready to get rid of that tool, it will do it in reverse to release it and ultimately allow it to drop into the ITC. Now the spindle itself is a normal ER11 collet. So if you're already familiar with those type of things, then it can take the same type bits as other ER11 collets, which basically means from one millimeter up to around seven millimeters in terms of the collet insert itself. Obviously it will take things like V bits, end mills, tapered ball nose bits, and most other CNC bits that you can think of. Now if the ATC isn't amazing enough on its own, it also has inbuilt RFID, which basically means on the top of your bit you can fit little identification chips and the machine can actually scan what is in the ATC holder. So it will come along and it will scan over the top of each one and it will know that let's say in the first holder is a 90 degree V bit, in the second holder is an end mill because you can program that all into your software. So if you're switching from maybe doing doing a job that's being machined out of wood to something that's being machined out of metal, you can just swap the bits over in the carriage, tell it to rescan what is in there, and it will automatically update its database to the new tools that you have inserted into the ATC. So it really is automating as much of the process as possible to make your life even easier. Now moving on from the ATC, this also has an inbuilt 3D probe right in there. Now a lot of you will already be familiar with a Z probe or an XYZ probe. And basically they're about finding the top of your material or the corner of your material to start with. Well, this can do all of that and a lot more. Not only can it touch the top of your surface to work out where it is, it can actually detect every edge of your material so it knows the exact position it is in. And using the same probe, it can also do things like self-leveling the surface. So if you're using something that is slightly uneven, it can map that out and ultimately adjust your job to follow the flow of the material. And that is all from the inbuilt probe without having to connect, disconnect anything. It does it all automatically. Now having a 3D probe inbuilt is absolutely amazing, but how does the machine know where to check for your material? Well, this is where it gets even better. There are two ways that this machine can identify your material on the bed itself. It has an inbuilt camera within the head of the spindle itself, so it will position over your material. You can use the software then to basically drag a square around your material and it will know how to identify it and ultimately do the touch probing off that. Also, it has an inbuilt laser that it can not only use to identify the material, but other things around it. So for example, it can scan the entire bed and it will pick up the clamps holding your material as well as the material itself. And again, from within the software, you can tell it to define that is the material, those are the clamps, avoid hitting those clamps. It really is so intelligent in the way it is being able to detect your material and simplify the whole process of defining what it is you are actually trying to machine on the bed. And the list of features keeps going on. It has an integrated MQL and air cooling system. Basically, either side of the machine, there are two separate tanks, and you can fill those with water or another liquid to ultimately cool your bits and material down as you are using it, which can be crucial when you are machining metal. And in regards to the air cooling, this can actively monitor the temperature and adjust the air cooling accordingly to whatever is needed. Now what I also like about this inbuilt air system is it actually cleans things off as it is working. And for example, if you've machined something and it goes to use the ATC, it will actually blast the ATC off and clean that first before opening the tray, which ultimately means that it stops as much debris getting into all of those components. So really nice little things that they've thought about ahead of implementing all of these technologies and features. Now in terms of the dust collection, there's a tray right at the front here that goes from the front to the back of the machine. And ultimately this is a pretty good job of collecting all the chippings off your job itself. And because of the air cleaning from the jets of the machine, it does help blow everything into this tray at the bottom. Now the tray itself is also formed as one complete piece. So basically what that means is when you are using the mist feature to help cool things down, any liquid is just going to run into that tray and remain in that tray itself. So ultimately it's not only there for chip dust collection, but it's also there to work with the mist cooling feature as well. Now I spoke about some of the amazing features embedded into this machine, and to be honest with you, I've probably forgot some of them as well. 
but obviously all of these need controlling in one way or another. Now luckily you can do this in two different methods. You can obviously connect it to a computer or laptop as we've got here, use their own studio to control everything. You also have an inbuilt touchscreen panel down here, again allowing you to operate and control the machine itself. And basically most of the functions can be operated identically between either the laptop or the touchscreen. So you do have a couple of options when wanting to operate this machine and control all of those different features. Now sticking with the software, as already mentioned, I've only had this a few days, so I haven't been able to dive into that as deep as I would have wanted. But they do advertise what is called a one-click smart system. Now ultimately what this means is you define your material in the software, you import something like a 3D model, and you basically tell it the bits that you already have in your ATC, such as an end mill, a ball nose, something like that. And from that, at the click of one button, it will do all the calculations for the cam itself. No more defining, this needs to be a 3D release, this needs to be a profile cut. It will work out what is the most efficient process using the bits that you have told it to do. And ultimately, making it a one-touch process to generate your toolpaths. Now, as already highlighted, there is inbuilt CAD CAM function within the Nestwork Studio, so you can do your design work in there. You still can use other popular products such as Carveco or Vectric to generate your designs from those and export the G code into this and ultimately run it within the studio as well. You will need the correct post processor to do this, but it still can run files from elsewhere. But obviously because of all the fancy features inbuilt into this, you do need to use the Nestwork Studio to run the machine itself. And in terms of connecting to the machine, this can be done via Wi-Fi or USB. Now, my experience with this machine so far has been largely positive. Obviously, there are a lot of features on this that I have never used before. So it has been a steep learning curve over the last few days to try and understand all of those, what order they have to be doing and how they interact with each other. So I'm not going to lie, as I say, there is a bit to learn with this machine. It's maybe not as simple as others, but equally, that is because of how advanced it is and all of the automatic things it can do for you. Now I'm always honest in my reviews, I have found some minor bugs in the software so far, but the Nestworks team have been brilliant at responding to me and ultimately giving solutions to work around them before they can implement a final fix in new software to be released. So I'm fairly confident by the time you start receiving these machines, all of that is going to be a thing of the past. The only other issue I've come across is I did have to realign the ATC upon starting to use this machine because one or two of the tool holders was slightly off center. With some very clear instructions from Nestworks, this took a few minutes and was fairly easy to do. There are a couple of additional accessories that can be purchased on top of the core machine. One of those is a fourth axis. I do have this in the shop and will be reviewing it as part of the next video. You can also get a 5 watt diode laser that fits under the bottom and ultimately you can then use this to do lasering obviously as well as CNC routering as well. I believe there is also a power clamp and if you're not familiar with these it's basically where you put your material in the clamp and it will automatically clamp onto it as tight as it can obviously without damaging the material itself. So again just making life a little bit easier other than manually tightening up bolts and clamps to hold things down. There is also an MP which I do have just behind me. If you're not familiar with these, these are basically a hand wheel that you can use to jog the machine about. There are a lot of CNC users out there that do like these and you often see them more on industrial grade machines. So a very nice to have if you are used to using an MPG. Now this is being launched and delivered as a Kickstarter campaign with an early bird offer at 2799. The RRP of the machine is $4,699. So that is roughly working out, I think, as a 45% discount for doing it early through the Kickstarter. Now, I've covered Kickstarter in more detail on previous videos, and I know some people are not a fan of purchasing from that platform. For those not familiar, the way it basically works is consumers are back in projects before they've gone into full production. And for that, you get a heavily discounted rate. You also potentially get bonuses if they hit certain goals. For example, an additional free toolkit if they reach like target one or target two, those type of things. Now, I do have to say, whilst Kickstarter platform is safe, there are some risks in backing projects themselves. And I would suggest doing your own research ahead of this, not only into obviously Kickstarter, but also the companies themselves to make an informed decision. 
Obviously the alternative is waiting until this has gone fully live and available on their website, but equally at that point, the price point will be higher. So there is a trade off. Now at this point, I've not had full confirmation of what is being delivered within the Kickstarter. Obviously the base package is likely to be the machine itself, but I suspect there will be bundles on top of that should you want to purchase some of the additional accessories already mentioned, such as the fourth axis and the laser. So that is an overview of the Nestwork C500. Obviously, as I said earlier, I haven't done much with this machine yet, but purely from its specifications and all the features I've been messing around with, it is looking impressive. It is probably the coolest thing I have genuinely ever used, and I'm looking forward to diving in with it a lot more. Obviously, if you've got any questions about it, comment down below and I will do my best to answer them in the next video. There will be links for this machine in the description area and in the comments section, so do check those out if you are interested in finding out more information or ultimately purchasing them. Thank you all very much for watching. Final thanks as always goes to my patrons and I'll see you all on the next video.